Hello and welcome to Brand X Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing the July update for Bond 26. Now this isn't a new story as such, it came out a few weeks ago, it was uh, September the 29th. Now, obviously I've been following the James Bond franchise quite a long time on this channel, um, anticipating the new film but I'm understanding it's going to take time and this article, like I say, from Deadline on June 29th talked about the Barbara Broccoli uh, comments that were made. Obviously Barbara Broccoli is one of the uh, producers. So let's have a quick look. So uh, James Bond producer Barbara Broccoli has revealed that it will be at least two years before the next 007 movie begins filming and that the task of finding an actor to replace Daniel Craig has be hasn't begun because it's a reinvention of Bond. Speaking to us at a star-studded event in central London to honour Broccoli and her brother Michael G. Win Wilson for their RFI fellowships, Broccoli wouldn't be drawn on who would play the next Bond, but did offer an update on the decision-making progress. Nobody's in the running, she disclosed. We're working out where to go with him. We're talking that through. There isn't a script, and we can't come up with one until we decide how we're going to approach the next film, because it's really a reinvention of Bond. We're reinventing who he is, and that takes time. I'd say filming is at least two years away. So I've been saying this for a while, the next film is going to take time, and that's just the reality of the thing, so I'm going to cut away for 10 seconds and we'll get into it. Very quick 10 second promo and affiliated link for you with a discount code, Tactical Soap. We've got Maverick, Bond and Durden. Check out the video description for a link and a discount code. So obviously I've been talking about the Bond franchise pretty much since the beginning of this channel. It's my biggest thing that I'm a fan of uh, and has been for a very long time. So I'm eagerly anticipating the new film. But like I say, realistically, we, we know just from the history of these movies that uh, on a lot of occasions, particularly when a recasting is involved, many years can elapse between um, one film and the next. Um, even when you've got the same actor, to be honest, Um world catastrophes or not it can still um be a, a long time you know years not just two years like we used to get back in the day back in the 60s and 70s and even the 80s between movies uh, it's quite rare now that uh that we can wait two years but to be honest who really wants a bond film out every two years um i mean not just from a point of franchise fatigue, whether or not you even think that's even a factor. In a lot of franchises, it doesn't seem to be a factor, but I think that um, the quality can suffer. The actual movie can suffer when we rush these things out and just kind of cash in on the fact that they, they have a, a popular um, IP um to to just put bums on seats and just throw out any old movie we've obviously seen that with the star wars franchise uh, as soon as disney bought it well, i felt that franchise was off to a good start um in, originally with the the force awakens in isolation that film was okay but after a few films had come out the, the fatigue did set in for a lot of people myself included because that was a franchise that we were used to seeing movies come out um, many years between each other and then just long pauses between anything else they were throwing out a movie a year and I think that the the quality suffered as well the reason I use Star Wars as an example is obviously we had an established kind of theme with regards to the the movie release timelines we have that with Bond to a certain degree I mean in more recent times we do anyway I mean we saw in contrast what happened the Daniel Craig movie that they only spent two years on um, really, f between between the movies, regardless of what was kind of going on behind the scenes, Quantum of Solace in two thousand eight only came out two years after Casino Royale. Now, I personally liked that film, really liked that film. A lot of people, a lot of people didn't like it. I am definitely in the minority by saying that I like that film. I would say it's the, it's the least my least favorite of of the Daniel Craig movies, but that's a high standard to me. So I'm biased, but uh, but yeah, point made anyway. Regardless of what I think. It wasn't the best movie. It was my least favorite, and I'm the biggest fan of that movie. Um, most people think, yeah, it was it was rushed out, and that's in hindsight as well. So you can't really use the fatigue argument by that point because you could have done when it originally came out. But obviously, um, in hindsight, whether you just watch all these movies close together, regardless of when they came out and how close together they came out, a lot of people do not think that that's a good movie. So obviously, I'm kind of talking about the, the concept of leaving it a while 
Um, that's one of the big takeaways from this article from Deadline that we saw a few weeks ago. Um, obviously, they're going to spend time. Think I'm going to get into reinvention aspect, but in a moment. But obviously, they're going to spend time reinventing things, and that does take time. So Barbara Wilson, she's very professional. Uh, I think that this in her and Michael G. Wilson's hands. I think this property, um, regardless of Amazon ownership or whatever. Uh, is in good hands anyway and they, they seem to to understand not just the fan base like me obviously being somebody who can get into this in depth and obviously puts a lot of thought to it but just the general movie going audience as well they seem to really understand them and that's why I was so happy about that last film um, I mean obviously there was a lot of concerns about it going work about it having an agenda in there and obviously changing the concept of, of the character that we all love uh, just to just to uh, tick the right boxes with the uh, the work crowd that seems to have a, a stranglehold on on society, but also the entertainment industry as well. Obviously, that's relevant to this conversation. Uh, but they didn't go there anyway. So again, I'm going to get into reinvention side of things shortly. But uh, what I mean is, with everything that's going on, they didn't seem to go too far into that. You can you can make a case that they maybe did in the last Bond film, but I personally don't think that they um, they went far with it at all um i think there was you can see some effort to to try it you know when it's raining and you can you get this oh you, it's trying to rain but it's not uh it's not raining but it's trying that, that was what was in this bond film it's like they were, there was some attempt in there to make it work but they didn't quite go there so point is anyway it's, it's in good hands with barbara wilson and obviously she knows what she's doing and, and michael g wilson as well uh, sorry, Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson. They know what they're doing. So uh, obviously um, I, I trust what they're saying and what, what she said in this makes sense about taking time with it because for the reasons I've kind of... Maybe sounds a bit like i kind of gone off on a few side tangents there, but no, I mean, it's, it's very relevant, obviously. The, the, the taking time with it, not rushing these things out and also um, not trying to get with the, the current day thing which I'm going to get into now with the reinvention because that was a word that was used in this that she was quoted as saying um, and quite a few people have been commenting about that and I've seen a few seen a few of the big players talking about this on YouTube as well. Uh, obviously Calvin Dyson did a, a similar video uh, a few weeks ago. He's, he was quite, um, quite hot off the press with this because he was talking about this article straight away. And I have to say I agree with him as well. Um, obviously, when, whenever you talk about reinventing a franchise nowadays, uh, you kind of think of again the work stuff. It's, it just it really is absolute cancer. It really is. But uh, obviously, in terms of movies, I mean, with all the other damage that they're doing in society, even the movies suffer as well. Um, not all of them. Obviously, we've had a few like Top Gun and so on that didn't just did not go there at all and made loads of money as a result. Um, but obviously a lot of people are concerned about that going forward. I mean, I, I personally think that we were so lucky that they didn't infect Bond 25, No Time to Die, with their ideology and their agenda of, of critical theory and all that other stuff, cultural Marxism. Uh, we didn't really see that a heavy dose of it in, in that film. But I think going forward, I don't see how they couldn't unless they're making a point of not doing Obviously, like Top Gun was very kind of patriotic a movie. They kind of made a point of just not being anti-work, but just not being work, which is never good enough to the work people. So uh, obviously, a lot of people hating on that movie and Terminal List as well. That was another thing recently with Chris Pratt. Again, it just wasn't against the work people. It was just not work, and I think that's why it's why that got a lot of flack as well. It was declared as right wing. Obviously, a Bond film as well. If they go there, that's going to get a lot of heat as well. But I think that producers like Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson uh, need to realise that it's not really a guarantee of success going down that route. It, a lot of times it, it just polarises things and people it just turns people off and it takes bums out of seats. And we have seen that time and time again. So uh, it's, it's not quite becoming um, something that the Hollywood studios are... Um, putting into action because they're still putting stuff out there and losing loads of money. Look at the Lightyear movie, the Buzz Lightyear movie, for example. Didn't uh, didn't do well at all. 
so yeah, just little things like that. I think that that's why a lot of people, when she talked about reinvention, people have been assuming that that means, oh God, we're going to have like a spin-off movie, which I think is a bad idea regardless anyway. Um, it has to be James Bond. The, the franchise is about him. The world that he inhabits is, isn't is that fascinating really. I mean, it's, it's our world. It's kind of, compared to a lot of other franchises, it's a bit more grounded. You could maybe do it with like Mission Impossible. You could take Tom Cruise out of it. But I mean, they tried that um, a few years ago with one of the movies. And I think they understood pretty quickly it wasn't working. So they made him more prominent in that movie because it was, it was mostly about his character, not the world within him. Same with Bourne as well. He took Jason Bourne out of a franchise. Again, it's, it's it's a franchise that's too grounded in reality. You take the main character out, try to reinvent it that way. doesn't seem to work. I'm not saying it cannot work. I just don't see it happening. So if they're talking about reinventing Bond to the degree that they've removed him from that and replaced him with anybody, I mean, again, going back to the work stuff, you can kind of see what they're going to try to do. They're going to have somebody who is what on the sort of intersectional spectrum of um oppression but um regardless even if they don't do that you could literally have the sort of cliched sound-minded able-bodied cisgendered straight white male in there as a, a replacement character for james bond john smith for example and he's 007 i wouldn't be interested in that movie at all it's about james bond so again it's it, reinvention is is tricky with, with james bond because you you got a very narrow kind of canvas to work with uh, so depends how they're gonna go having said that this is where my kind of you know calm down moment comes in because a lot of people have been kind of going where I've just gone with all that about reinvention that's their concern my thinking is and this is what Calvin Dyson said as well fully agree with him every time they recast Bond it is a reinvention uh, I mean yeah they keep a lot of the stuff a lot of the slapstick stuff they, they kept back in the day uh, from Sean Connery to Roger Moore. Maybe they even kind of amped it up a little bit with Roger Moore, a lot of this kind of silliness we saw that. So that was a reinvention. Obviously, George Lazenby was a massive reinvention. That was like a serious character compared to the Sean Connery um, version. And then obviously, Timothy Dalton was a bit more grounded. Pierce Brosnan was kind of a throwback to some of the older stuff whilst bringing it into the modern era of the 90s. So all of those were reinventions. I mean, a lot of outsiders, people that aren't in the sort of James Bond fan bubble, will probably just kind of say, oh, they're all the same regardless. You know, Daniel Craig ones, it's always the same thing. He goes on a mission, Q gives him his gadgets, he goes off. You know, a lot of people think they're all the same, but really they're not. There is a definite um, line where you can say this is a kind of a turning point. Even with Roger Moore, before they even recast, if you look at the 70s ones, um, the last one being Moonraker, and then going straight into the 80s with um, Fiore Eyes Only that was directed by John Glenn in 1981. That was a turning point. Even though they didn't even recast, there was a definite change of course. And there was a reason for that, because Moonraker was a little bit silly. It was a great film, but a lot of people said, come on now, it's, it's, it's really getting far removed from, from what it was. Granted, we were cashing in on the Star Wars thing at the time. Um, bringing Back to Earth um and make it about the guys you know the, the the people and all that kind of stuff rather than the gadgets and the the fantastic plot lines and stuff so that was a reinvention as well there have been so many over time so don't panic too much when we hear that word i know like i said that was, that was why i was talking about the work stuff that's one of the main concerns when movies are coming out and future projects are kind of being put in the works um that that really is something to be concerned but with bond how could it not be reinvented Obviously, there's very specific questions. Is it going to be reinvented with a brand new cast? Um, uh, is it going to have Money, Penny and M from the last films? That wouldn't be unheard of because obviously they've done that many times before with with the change of actors. You had Bernard Lee um, was the Sean Connery M and then continued through Roger Moore and uh, they recast that a few times. And obviously, Desmond Llewellyn is Q. Um, he was there through all of them up till Pierce Brosnan, including Pierce Brosnan. And I'm pretty sure if he'd, if he, if he'd have lived longer, we would have seen him on the screen with Daniel Craig somehow as well. So uh, obviously that question, you know, are we going to continue these characters? Um, I'm going to kind of get into a spoiler in, in a moment if you've not seen the last Bond film. So spoiler alert here, you've got 10 seconds before I go into it. But obviously 
given everything that happened in No Time to Die, we've got a fundamental um, issue with the next movie going forward. Last one, and I'm about to say it, Bond died in that last movie. So how can you, seriously, how can you not reinvent this franchise unless you're going forward without James Bond, which goes back into what I was saying before about that being a bad idea, um, most likely. So uh, if they are going to just say, you know, like they did in the past, obviously don't worry too much about the timeline, the continuity, just enjoy it for what it is. If they obviously are, they are recasting Bond and they bring back... Um, Rafe finds as M and um, Naomi Harris as Money Penny and so on. Um, it would be a bit weird. A lot of questions would be asked, but you could say the same thing. You had M bring Pierce Brosnan's James Bond. She was a new M. He was long established as Bond. Then you've got Daniel Craig. It's his first outing as Bond. Yet you've got M as long established as M, which doesn't make sense. It's the same character, but how does that work? If James Bond is always supposed to be the same guy. Um, all that stuff is uh, what the hell it's you know you, you could just go mental thinking about it and I think with this franchise um, it's long established just don't think about it just there's there's continuity but there's not continuity don't worry about it just enjoy it for what it is and I think given that they've got the luxury of being able to reinvent things without having to be tied down to any fundamentals if all that makes sense anyway I feel like I'm rambling a bit but I hope that makes sense anyway so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously, there was the, the two takeaways from this was reinvention thing and obviously the, the fact that they're going to be taking a long time, well, two years before they even start filming. And that doesn't mean they said that they're starting filming in two years. They said at least two years. And realistically, I think it's going to be longer than that. I think it potentially needs to be longer than that as well. Uh, they did say as well, obviously, they haven't actually cast anyone yet. I wouldn't be surprised if they had people in mind. I think that just means, like, specifically they haven't cast anybody or they haven't interviewed anybody, they will have people they want. They will have had talks with people over the years. They did that so many times. There's so many actors out there that could have been Bond, that, you know, meetings were had. Um, but, again, that doesn't mean they've actually, like, auditioned as such. So, um, obviously, there's the usual rumoured people that we, that we hear about. I don't think it's going to be any of those people, to be honest. I think they're going to go with somebody who we've probably not heard of if you said the name, but you might have seen him in like one or two films. It's somebody that you've probably already seen in a movie and probably didn't even think, oh, he'd be a good James Bond. Um, but then once they obviously go down that route, it's like, oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's actually a really good idea, given the reinvention, which we don't know about yet. So it depends. Looking forward to seeing what they do anyway. Um, there's, there's so many angles. They could, another thing that they could do, they could do a, a James Bond franchise that's set in the original era of the books. I find it very hard to believe that they would do that because it would cost a lot of money to do it. Um, but whatever. We will see. They could even do a TV series. They obviously did that with Jack Reacher. They did the, the movies with Tom Cruise. They could do a, a TV series that, that is a James Bond back in the, the 50s when the books came out. That would be very interesting. It would be very different. I, I don't personally like it when they turn movies into TV shows, but given that... This wouldn't be a continuity of the movies. It would be an adaptation of the books. That would be kind of interesting. I would actually watch that as well. So, And it's rare that I, you get me saying that I would watch a TV series um, that's obviously in exchange for a movie. But um, but yeah, I think that's, that, that could be a good idea. And that would be a reinvention. With something they haven't done before, it would be very ballsy as well. So uh, a lot of theories. I'll cut this short because I'm kind of really kind of getting off topic, I suppose. It's not really the point of... There wasn't the indication of the interview. She didn't say anything about a TV show. So I will leave it there, obviously. Uh, at the beginning of this, I did do an affiliated link to uh, Tactical Soap. Um, there is one that is actually inspired by James Bond. Uh, well, they've obviously, from a branding point of view, very nice stuff. I've been using this for years. Um, there's an affiliated link in the description, so you can check that out. You can get 15% off. Obviously, it helps me as well with some of the projects I'm working on, uh, keeping uh, paying the bills and so on like that, because it costs time and money to do these things. Anyway, so I will leave it there. I will continue to report on this as long as there's things to report on. I'd like to do this once a month, but I think it's going to be a, a slow process. I think it's going to be years before we get anything uh, announced. So um, it can be a bit demoralising when you just want a new Bond film to come out. But I think as I've gotten older, these things don't seem like as long a time. Uh, between movie to movie so uh, an advantage of getting older I guess anyway definitely rambling so I'm going to cut it short there 
for our next views you can obviously subscribe to the channel you can like the video and uh, yeah see you all next time thank you very much for watching